Um, if it's super dark in here, that would be because it is pouring rain, so you might be able to hear it, but I don't know how the lighting is going to be. I'm trying my best here. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with an extremely, extremely late video. It may be the middle of July in 2024, but I am here to talk to you all about my most disappointing reads of 2023. Yes, I know, like I said, very late, but your girl was in a depressive episode and did not film pretty much anything in 2023. We're just now starting to get the mojo back where I want to actually be filming. So we are catching up. If you have not noticed, a lot of my videos have just been wrap ups on this channel. We're gonna change that today. So without further ado, let us get started. So these books are in no particular order. It does not mean that they were necessarily bad books. They just were not what I wanted from these particular books. So the first book on my list is The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores. I love this cover with my whole heart. I think it is gorgeous, but this story was not gorgeous. I'll tell you that much. It was not gorgeous. It basically follows two girls named Ava and Kai. They were best friends until one night a vampire attack leaves Kai's mother dead and Ava turned into a vampire. And Kai believes that Ava is the one who killed her mother. It is supposed to be a sapphic Rapunzel retelling. Rapunzel is my absolute favorite princess ever. I love that story. So I was so excited to get a sapphic version of it. I'm sorry to report that this is not what this was. These characters were so boring and one-dimensional. It's supposed to be a romance. They literally share one kiss. The evidence of how Ava is responsible for Kai's mother's death is flimsy at best. It was just not what I wanted at all. So it was definitely disappointing, especially because I wanted to love it so that I could display it on my shelf. But I got rid of that book so quick. Next I have 13 Doorways, Wolves Behind Them All. This is by Laura Ruby and this one sounded so cool. It had a ghost narrator, which I was so into intrigued by. It ended up being just way too slow paced for my liking. I found it to be so boring and I just think that there were so many subplots going on that I couldn't keep them all straight. It was definitely not what I wanted. The next one I have is Gull Island by Anna Porter. This one was so insanely boring. Literally nothing happened the entire book. This basically follows a woman named Jude who returns to her family's cottage on Gull Island. She is trying to uncover memories of her past along with trying to find her father's will after he mysteriously goes missing. So the concept was very intriguing to me, but like I said, it was so insanely slow. It dragged on for such a short book. It's literally only 252 pages and yet it felt like a 600 page book. The one thing I will say is that this narrator is so unreliable and I personally love unreliable characters so that was the only reason why I continued on reading this book. I did end up switching to the audiobook of this and that did help and improve the story for me but so disappointing. Then I have Vengeance Road by Erin Bowman. I thought I was going to love this so much. It's like a revenge plot, which I love so much. Like revenge plots are one of my favorite things ever, but it was so boring and it was insanely predictable. So I was very upset about that. And I think that the representation of the Apache tribe was questionable at best. So this definitely did not live up to my expectations and I was definitely disappointed by it. The next book is one that I had on my TBR for years and I finally picked it up. It is The Five Stages of Andrew Bradley by Sean David Hutchinson. Everybody says that this is like the saddest book they have ever read in their entire lives and I literally felt nothing. No tears were shed no sadness was felt and that was really upsetting. Honestly I never really do cry at books anyways but I thought I thought maybe this one would break my cold dead heart, but it did not. I literally felt nothing. I also want to say that this is definitely not a bad book. Like I did enjoy my time reading it. I believe I gave it a three out of five stars. I was just expecting to stop. The final most disappointing book that I have for my 2023 reading year was Elixir by Hilary Duff. I wanted to love this so much because my girl Hilary Duff wrote it, but it was not a good book. 
it was not good. That's a lie. It was, it was decent. It wasn't bad. It was decent. But I wanted to love it. It basically follows a girl named Clea whose father mysteriously disappears and she is desperate to find him. She starts looking through old photographs and she realizes that there is a strange man who suddenly appeared in every single picture she has taken. So she teams up with her best friend Ben to try to figure out who this man is and if he is related to her father's disappearance. I thought that the concept of this was really cool. I think that the whole idea of the elixir of life was interesting, but this was executed so so poorly. I just found it to be so predictable, which definitely hindered my enjoyment of the book because it was just so obvious what was going to happen next. It also had a love triangle, which I did not enjoy either of the love interests, so I was just wanting Clea to be by herself, live in her own life, and she just could not stop thinking about these two people, and it really irked me. It all just felt very forced and rushed, like why can your girl not just be an independent woman? That's all I'm saying. Very very disappointed I did not like Hillary's book and I will be getting rid of it unfortunately yes moment of prayer for Hillary Duff leaving my household all right everybody so those were my most disappointing reads of 2023 I will hopefully be filming my most surprising my worst books and my best books of 2023 and uploading those as soon as I can let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video goodbye